name is Tori Mystic. Thank you all for coming to hear about Facebook. I hope that we can provide you with some new knowledge and improve your game a little. Um, just get started here. All right, so how many people here uh, have a fan page for their business or their blog or some other adventure? Does anybody not have a fan page and they want to know how to make one? A couple? Okay. So it seems like we're all in the same boat for the most part. Um, so what I really specialize in, I call my business marketing with style. Uh, and I work with a lot of local retailers, restaurants, nonprofits, and I sort of specialize in making their social media and whatever else I do for them look really nice <laughs> and also be really functional. Um, so I think those are those are two important things, and I think that's something that fans want from social media. Um, it, it's stuff that looks good. Nobody wants to look at a uh, horrible, cluttered up, black and red, like crazy font thing. So, come on. <laughs> um, the first thing that I'm, sh I'm sh hoping everybody uh, who does not have a cover image yet on their fan page. Okay, because there's a lot of. Oh, okay. so they removed it. Oh, they removed it. That's suspicious. <laughs> That's a really racy picture. <laughs> they made it tiny, like. Yeah. So you. So that's what you have to go in. Um, if you don't know, uh, you guys can come on in. There's plenty of people on the other side, I think. Yeah. better? It's the middle, uh, it's that middle spot that's, uh, Okay, yeah. Great. Now I think they won't be able to see me on the video, but whatever. Um, okay. So, this is what fan pages look like now, and this is the timeline view, which should all be semi-exploded. Um, so this is your profile picture, and that's probably what you're talking about. Um, previously profile pictures were kind of like a vertical layout, and now they've all been converted to squares. Uh, but what they've done is allow you to have a giant cover image. Uh, and everybody should have a cover image uploaded onto their fan page. If you don't, you're seriously missing out on Facebook real estate that is just being handed to you to promote uh, your products or your business or your blog or photography or whatever you want to promote. Um, so, number one thing when you're having a fan page is you need to name your page, obviously. Uh, I'm sure if you have a page, you've already done this because it is one of the requirements that you've been having a page. Um, but the, you are allowed to change your name one time. So if something that I say here really affects you and you want to change your name, you can do that one time. Uh, so I'll get into a little bit more detail in that. And another thing is uh, customizing your URL. Uh, so I think this is something that a lot of people miss out on doing. <coughs> Um, but it's an important thing that you can use to really increase engagement and to uh, increase engagement with real world people who uh, you can then direct to your fan page. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. Uh, naming your page. So a lot of times people want their names really stand out, so they'll put in all caps, or um, they'll say, this is the official page, this is it, check it out. Uh, and that's not really the best way to name a page. Uh, what I like to say is, think about how someone would use the name of your page or your business in a sentence. Uh, so, for example, I'm headed to a Pittsburgh Steelers game. Pittsburgh Steelers would be a great name for their fan page. However, I do not think that's what they use. Um, saying headed to a the Pittsburgh Steelers official page game doesn't really flow as well. Um, and it's kind of awkward to tell uh, when you're making a status update. So um, this is important because when you want to increase engagement, you're hoping that people will tag your page uh, when they're making status updates, tag your page in photos and things like that, um, or for other fan pages to tag your fan page, and this comes up a lot for me when I'm working uh, with some of my clients, is a lot of their vendors have these like goofy convoluted names, and it just looks unprofessional 
it on me. It makes me look bad uh, when their page, page names are really goofy. Um, so do everybody a favor and have a nice name for your page. Uh, I, this is just my personal preference, but I would also leave out LLC, Inc., official page, anything like that, because it makes it very awkward to say. Um, so that's that. Any questions about anything? Did you say you don't like editor No, I think that would, that would be the preferential way to do it. Um, you know. And why the exclamation point? Uh, oh, I don't know, because I think you'd be excited. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that wasn't part of the tips, but, um, you know, just, just try to have your, your name be something that is easy to work into, regular English language. Um, all right, so this is some information that some people might want to take note of if you do, do not already know. Um, your profile picture, now, I always set them to 190 pixels by 190 pixels. And um, that gives you a nice square, and it, you know it'll work really well with the layout that Facebook has already. Uh, for your cover image, it is 800 and I think actually I have that reverse. I think it's 851 by 315. Sorry for that typo, guys. Um, 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall. That is the exact dimensions of the Facebook cover image. So if you have any um, image editing or design software like Photoshop or something like that, you can create a new document with those exact dimensions and you can create a cover image that's going to fit exactly on your Facebook page. Um, you can see for this, this is the New Balance Pittsburgh page that I manage. And um, you know, another thing that I think is important is to reflect seasonal events, trends, and promotions. Uh, so right now it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October. Um, so we've gone ahead and we have the luxury of working with New Balance Corporate where I can use a lot of their imagery that they already have available. Um, if you have a store uh, where you sell products from other vendors, I'm sure they would be more than happy for you to use their cover images. Uh, you might want to ask just to make sure. But for this, I know it's approved. So I just go ahead and grab the cover image from New Balance Corporate. Uh, and they have this one set up really nice, and you can see they have it laid out so that this text starts right here, so it's not cut off by the profile picture. So if you are going to design your own cover image, just keep in mind that this square is going to be here and it's never going to move. So if you want to put text along the bottom, just make sure that you keep it over you know, if this is 190, maybe like 210 pixels or something like that, um, just to be safe. Um, again, you know, I just try to make things stand out, and people usually interact with your page in their timeline. Um, but that doesn't mean that you want to neglect how how everything looks when they visit your actual page. So I just try to make it all tied together nicely. Um, usually, the New Balance logo is red and black. Uh, but since we have all this pink stuff up here, I just threw a pink logo up just so that it looks nice. Because I think that that's important and people value that. So um, there's there's a few guidelines that Facebook, or a few rules, I guess, that Facebook has for cover images. Uh, you're not really allowed to uh, put promotions or sales up there, like, like our page to get 30% off. Um, that's sort of against Facebook's guidelines now. Um, are they going to come out and like yell at you? I don't really know, but uh, it is against the best practices, so just keep that in mind. Okay, um, this is another big thing that I think a lot of people don't really do. Um, how many people here have set their custom URL already? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Anybody want to know how to do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's very easy. It's easier than you would think. You just simply go to log into Facebook and go to facebook.com slash username. Uh, so you have to be an admin on the page in order to do this. Uh, once you go there, um, the screen will show up and you'll have a pull down menu of all the pages that you're an admin of. You might just have one. Uh, it'll pull down just the one you might have 25. Uh, you select the page that you would like to create a custom URL for, 
and um, I think like another pop-up window comes up and you <coughs> enter what you'd like. I'm sure there's a character limit, but I don't know what it is off my head. Um, and this is where uh, Facebook will check to see if that's already been taken. So uh, a lot of times it will already be taken. You'll have to add like PGH or Pittsburgh or whatever you want to the end of it to sort of customize it. Mm -hmm. So when you say go to facebook.com slash username, you mean the word username, not yeah. your username? Yeah, not your right. username. username. Spell right. out username. It's very confusing. Yes. Oh, no, no question. Okay. Um, yeah, so the advantage of this, and you know, I think that this can really increase your engagement with the community at large. Um, and I like to think of engagement for your page not as just on Facebook, but sort of like in the world, in your community. Um, so when you have a custom URL like this, it's so much easier when you do a print ad or a flyer or a business card or anything to just have facebook.com slash marketing style or you know whatever your thing is. It's going to be a lot easier for people to find. You can just do the Facebook logo and then your custom URL after that. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can play with that. Um, but by having this easy to find page, I mean, of course people can go on and just search in the search bar for you. Um, but this really lays it out clearly for people and you can never make things easy enough for people when it comes to getting them to come and convert them into a fan. Okay, so um, now that we've sort of covered the the basic nuts and bolts of getting your page set up and looking good and being functional, um, you have to start creating some content. And I think that it would really behoove you to have some original content on your page. Um, photos are always king on Facebook. People love photos. Videos are, of course, really great and easier to make than you would think. And I'm sure there are some sessions today that today and tomorrow that you could sit on sit in on and uh, learn how to create a really nice video for yourself. Uh, and also personal insight. Uh, this is something that I really push. A lot of people get stumped about like what to put on their page or what to say. Um, but whatever your page is, you're an expert in that field. Um, you know, if it's for a business or a hobby or a blog, you have some sort of expert knowledge um, that you can share with people. And that's why people are really liking your page and going to become a fan is if they can get some sort of knowledge, um, you know, something valuable out of you. It, you know, it's a give and take. They like you, well, you have to give them something back for that. And, and that can be, um, you know, useful knowledge. So, um, for photos. Uh, I really like original photos for your page. Uh, if you have a store or something like that, taking pictures in the store gives customers a really great idea of what your store looks like, the environment, the atmosphere, where they can find the item in the store. Uh, it, it, it again like brings the real world into social media. Uh, so that's really great. Uh, of course, keep your pictures professional on your page unless your page is about being unprofessional, then I guess keep them super unprofessional. Um, and then make the photos as current as possible. So um, that's sort of double-edged sword, I guess, because uh, you could, people, I think, do like old, like throwback pictures. A lot of fan pages are doing this thing where like every Wednesday or Thursday they'll post like some old throwback picture from like 100 years ago or five years ago or, you know, something that just kind of lets people who who've known your brand or you for a long time, sort of like reminisce about like, oh yeah, I remember that party. Um, but, but generally, I think it's good to, to post current stuff. So um, again, like if you own a store or something and you take photos of merchandise that just came in, but you forget to post it for three weeks, well, you know, a lot of that stuff might be sold out. Uh, it's just not really a best practice. So um, just take a few minutes. T take a picture and post it. Uh, it could be one picture. It could be an entire album of pictures. Yes? On the subject of professional, what if you sell professional services like a lawyer or an accountant? What would you recommend? And it's a B2B type. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, I mean, do you go if you go on a lot of like business trips or client meetings or things like that, you could just post like a picture of crossing the Smithfield Street Bridge. 
on my way to a meeting, you know, something like that. Um, do not take pictures while you're driving. It's not that I'm fun. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I think that there's, there's always content, always photos that, like, that you can always post no matter what your business is or what your fan page is about. It's just a matter of, like, brainstorming and, and being creative and, and thinking of what that is. Um, you know, if you have a, a business that relies a lot on confidentiality, uh, it's going to be hard <laughs> to to think of, of good photos. You just have to kind of be vague about it. Um, you know, I, I can't think of any really great examples off the top of my head, but... If someone in the organization receives an award. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If someone receives an award or if you're going to like a business networking event mm -hmm. um, or something like that, um, maybe you... Someone one of your clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe take a picture of your team at an event and post it and just say, what a great time at this event at such and such a place. You could tag the um, venue. You could tag the award. Um, you know, if they have a fan page, that sort of gets your name out there and kind of gets people seeing it. Um, there, there's always things that you can do. Right, right. Post. Yes? Let's say if you're a surgeon, uh, yes. Can you take a, you know, a picture of a classical operation? <laughs> I Oil painting from the 19th century or some yes. performing surgery. Yes, I think that would be interesting. I think people would like that to see um, how surgery has changed in the last many decades. Yeah, no, that would be interesting. I, I would like to see that. Um, so just like another little technical tool that's relatively new, I guess, on Facebook, is you can, this is again goes back to like the style and making your page look nice. Um, you can, I'm sure everybody knows how to select an album cover, but you can also adjust the positioning of the album cover on your actual fan page. So this is just a screenshot of like where this appeared um, as like a post on the fan page. Um, and all you would do is press the edit button, the little pencil there, and then go down to reposition photo, and you can drag and adjust this. And I found that to be a really useful tool um, just to make everything look really nice. Um, if, you know, if you have, you know, the focus of your photograph is like way over in the corner, you can do your best to kind of drag the photo up so that when people look at it, it, it looks nice and engaging and they click on it. So it's like within the box? Like you can... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, if it's a touch screen projector, you could um, move this picture around, oh. um, like up or down. Like say I went at the head of that snake service thing, be more in the center, I could like drag this down. Um, the, the entire photo within that box. Yeah. And then that's the way it'll show up in people's timelines. So again, most people interact with your page in their own timeline. So you want to make sure that, uh, I mean, you have so much control over what goes out there that you don't want some like off-center crappy picture showing up in their timeline. Um, you know, do everything you can to, to make it look nice. Question. Yes. It would show up in their timeline just because you changed it? It would show up in there. It say so and so changed the picture. No, no, it won't show up and say no. If you adjust it, it won't say like so and so readjusted their picture. It'll just show up that you posted the album or the picture. That's a good question though, because Facebook does sort of overshare and they, your edits. They've changed so many things so many mm -hmm. times that I gave up a year ago on following it or using the page. Well, don't give up. Um, <laughs> up to, in the past year, a lot has changed, so. Um, you know, hopefully after this weekend you'll be inspired to go and yeah, update it. I hope so. Um, so I'm, I'm not really going to tell you like how to make a video. I'm sure there are other sessions this weekend that could tell you that. Um, but I am going to tell you that it's great content for your page. And it's really great content if it's less than a minute <laughs> long or somewhere in that time frame, a minute to two minutes. Um, so keep it as short as possible. And I mean, most of us I would think in this room have smartphones that have video capabilities. Um, it's so easy to make a video. Um, I have a great video editing app on my iPhone called Splice that um, if you take several short videos, you can slice them together um, so you don't have to take it all in like one shot, which is helpful a lot of the time. Um, so this was just like a super simple video. I mean, the lighting is like really not that great on it. Um, so I guess that sort of goes against my own philosophy, but um, 
it, it sort of is okay because it was so timely. You know, I posted it like the next morning after this event, um, and it was a really exciting event for the store. And literally, just an employee was like, "Hi, everybody! Welcome to the In Motion Walking Club." And then I just took a little video of people walking and registering, and that was it. Um, so, so doing something like that is is really helpful um, to to sort of getting engagement on your page. And of course, a whole another session would be looking at your insights and kind of seeing who is clicking and who is watching. Yes. As far as uh, getting engagement with videos. Is it better, I mean, like slick produce, you know, things, or sometimes I feel like this kind of grainy, poor lighting has a, a different charm. I mean, which one yeah. is this more, I feel like this would engage me more. Uh, I'd be more interested in that than I would, say, a nice commercial for a new show. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think that videos like this have a certain authenticity to them. You know that somebody literally like just shot it on their iPhone. They are just there. It sort of makes you feel like you were there. Um, whereas things that are too slick and smooth and perfect transitions and lighting, it feels like you're watching a commercial sometimes. Um, and, and people don't like to watch commercials. So, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm not saying that like if you went to the expense of having fabulous video produced, that it wouldn't be worthwhile because I think that that uh, is beneficial in its, in its own right. But if you're going to try and post a video on Facebook every week or something, just shoot a simple, a simple little video. Don't overthink it. Yeah. I definitely think we've been overthinking. Yeah, I mean, I don't think don't overthink with anything that you post because if you really screw up, you can go and delete it. I mean, that's horrible advice, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that on Facebook, in order to, to get the, the engagement that you want. There's all these rules and all this stuff that I'm telling you even about what to post, when to post it, how to post it. Um, you have to find out what works for your fans. So if you have a really niche topic, niche blog, and you have like 75 fans, um, they might not want the same kinds of postings as a big brand with 10,000 fans. So you know you need to experiment and, and see what you post, um, what kind of comments and likes your and shares your posts get to know what your fans like. So it's really important. I don't know if anyone just sat in on Katie's session on reporting, um, but it's very important to go back and, um, and look at the success of your posts. Um, I mean, that really is a key to engagement. I should have actually included that in here. Um, but something that I do every month is I go in and you just click on your insights. Um, and this is just a really simple, straightforward way to look at this is just, um, you know, look down the history of all the postings you've done. You can keep scrolling down as far as you want and just see which posts got the most uh, interactions, the most engagement, the most viral spread, things like that. Uh, and then you'll know that that's what your fans like. So um, last year I did a evaluation for the Warhol Museum for their social media. And I went through and looked at like all these postings to see like what they should be talking about. They they had like twenty five thousand Facebook fans, but they had a quarter of a million Twitter followers. So it was a big discrepancy, and they wanted to increase their Facebook. So um, we need, we needed to see what what their fans wanted, basically. Uh, and looking through that, we found that celebrity or er, photos of like celebrity portraits that Warhol did, or basically like any painting that Warhol did that was somehow related to a holiday got huge hits. So like they posted <laughs> Easter eggs, like an Easter egg painting on Easter. Insane. They posted a portrait of Bill Murray on Groundhog Day. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for them, that was really key. So in creating a strategy for them, we looked up holidays, both real and fake, um, and figured it out what what Warhol artwork would coordinate with that holiday, and now that's part of their strategy. They post these kinds of images on those days, and it's increased their engagement. So it's important to know what your fans want to see. Okay. Um, all right. Now, now that we've talked about creating your content on your own page and making your page set up nice and look nice. Uh, it's important, just as it is in the real world, to get out there and talk to people in your community or in your field. Um, so if you're not already doing this, you need to go do this tomorrow, um, is go 
to the top of your page, edit page, and select use Facebook as your fan page. This happens to be computer reach. Um, and once you do that, it'll be exactly like Facebook um, for yourself. And, and basically, um, you know, you want to go out there and like other fan pages. You cannot friend people at the fan page, but you can like other fan pages when you're using the page <coughs> as your page. Um, and like other businesses that you interact with, maybe your neighboring businesses, uh, nonprofits that you support, or you know, maybe you went to a fundraising event, that's enough. You know, if you support them by going to their event, like them on Facebook as the, on behalf of your page. Um, you know, if you're a blog, like other relevant bloggers, uh, you know, likewise with any other kind of business, you want to like the people that you would want to network with in real life. Um, and it's great because you can network with people on here that you could never network with in real life. Um, so you can reach out to um, tons of pages and, you know, I, I think this isn't like really a rule to go by, but the bigger sort of brands and stuff, they're not going to engage with you as much as like the smaller ones. So that's why I think, you know, engaging and liking nonprofits is a really great thing because they're eager to connect with people. Uh, and so they're likely to interact back with you. Um, and, and plus, supporting charity is a really great thing to do. Um, so, is, I mean, is this really repetitive for everybody? No? Okay. Um, does anybody, do you guys know how to do what I'm talking about, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where does one find edit page? If you go to your fan page and just scroll all the way to the top, above like your insights and messages, It'll say edit page. And you just click on it and it'll give you those options right there. And so use Facebook as your page. And then um, from there, you know, just click the Facebook or home or whatever, and you'll see all the pages that you like. If you don't like any other pages, uh, there won't be anything in your news feed there, and there won't be anything really to do. So it's key that you go out there and, and like other pages. Okay. Um, now, keeping track of your time, which I should probably be doing right now, um, it is really important. I think a lot of people um, don't have time, they think they don't have time to do their Facebook page, um, but really, you know, it's just a matter of not getting stuck on Facebook, clicking from place to place to place, because you really can waste hours, if not days, doing that. Um, so, you know, set aside some time for yourself, and one of, the, one of the things about that is the time that you set aside may not be the best time to post something. So say you want a restaurant and you're really only free at like 2 a.m., that's probably not the best time to post anything to your fan page. People aren't really going to see it. Um, by the time they get around to looking at it when they're hungry for dinner the next night, your post is like way long gone. So uh, a great thing that Facebook rolled out relatively recently is scheduling your fan page posts. So Anybody familiar with doing that? Yeah. So um, this is a great thing. I wish that there was a button that just said today. Uh, and you can kind of select the date based on that. But if not, you have to go and select the year, and then the month, and then the day, and then the hour, and then the minute. Um, so that's sort of tedious. But um, you know, and this is another thing that's just sort of a statistic that Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, between 1 to 4 are times that Facebook posts get a lot of clicks? Yes. Okay, so you're on your page, it says, do you want to say something? Yes. Click on that. Yeah. And you enter that, then where do you find this instead of just hitting the turn? Right there. So um, this is just a screenshot of exactly what you're talking about. The little box that says, say something. Or write something, or whatever. It's a little clock. It's yeah, little clock you, you just time. enter whatever text you want, and then this the little button allows you to schedule. This little button allows you to put a location on your post if you would like to do that. Um, yeah, that's it. And then okay. once, I've once never you seen do, that. yeah, so it's there. What's, what's it, different about? It? You have to click on the clock to get the rest. Of yeah. It? Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to click on the clock in order for this little thing to show up with like the little dotted line and everything. And then you just hit schedule. And it schedules your posts to go out. Um, and this is particularly great if you're having an event or something like that, um, and you're very busy during the event. Uh, you can't really be checking your Facebook page. You can schedule posts to go out on your behalf. 
during an event or travel or whatever. Can you schedule reoccurring <laughs> posts? No, you have to do every... each one individually. Okay. So you could say the same thing every Wednesday, but you have to go in there and, and set it to go off each Wednesday. Yeah. Yes? Can you schedule photos to an album? I do not think you can schedule photos to an album, but you can schedule individual photos or individual videos. Um, I don't you I don't think you can schedule an event to be posted. I think that's just live. Um, even though it, it still shows up up there, I don't think yeah. that works. Um, but yeah, you can post individual photos. You could post the album, hide it from your news feed, grab the link, and then schedule that post to go out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. As Facebook's evolving and everything, how are you keeping up on best practices and Facebook rules and changes and yeah. Well, the last time that Facebook really did a big update was in March. Um, I think March 31st was when the timeline went live, right? Or I think so. Um, so they released a series of like webinar videos, um, training page admins on best practices to use, and I'm sure all those videos are still available um, on on Facebook's website. Um, so you could go back and watch those if you wanted to. Um, there's huge like FAQ forums and things like that, um, which can be kind of difficult to read because they're very wordy and they're very legalized. Um, so, so the webinars were very helpful um, if you're interested in that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, a lot of people never like go back and look at their settings that they've had. It's kind of once you create a page, you never look at it again. So I just thought this was worth mentioning. Um, you know, since we're talking about engagement, we want to make your channels as open as possible on your Facebook fan page to get people interacting with you. It's really important that you have certain settings set. So, like age restrictions, if you have it set to like people over 21 and you're like some teenager store, it's not going to work out for you. Um, <laughs> you also want to have the box checked that everyone can post to your timeline. Uh, if you don't have that checked, then you're not going to get any postings. <laughs> Uh, for anybody, obviously, you want to make sure you have everyone can add photos and videos of you, um, and then people can tag photos posted by New Balance Pittsburgh. Um, so that comes in handy if you have an event uh, and you're posting, or, or really anything, but this is just one example. If you have an event and you post like, a ton of pictures and there's all these different people, um, if they go in and tag themselves and all their friends will see the album and click on it, and that can really, um, I've seen like really great spikes in traffic based on people tagging themselves. So. Question. Yeah, I have a huge frustration with how Facebook has changed in the past year with um, <laughs> like fans posting things on the timeline and instead of staying on the timeline, it kind of gets reallocated to the side. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that changing? Because I just noticed that um, readership on my page has gone down because fans aren't engaging with fans as much. Mm -hmm. but I really appreciate the fact that there was a forum. So if a fan would post something, other fans. Would respond to that, and then there would be um, communication and dialogue around that. But mm -hmm. now it's like a, if the only person that sees it is the page administrator, mm -hmm. and that's that's it, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, on your page, if you scroll down, like so that you're like right below your cover image, uh, where your posts start, there is a setting where you can view post by page, post by others, or post by all. Um, so if you were to select post by others, it would show up kind of how it used to. Um, and so you'd be able to see like everyone's posts. They would be like full, um, you know, full conversations instead of like that little box on the side, how they are now. Um, so you just kind of like scroll down like five inches or so and, and select this little thing will pop up, like see post by others. And, and that sort of changes the format of your page. So, that, so is that something like a visitor presses to see, or yeah. like a setting that you can put so whenever someone lands on your page, they I, see everyone? I know that it's something you can do like as you go to the page of live. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. If it's a setting, does anybody know? Answer that. I don't think you can set it to default. 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 You can set it so that some of those options are not available. Yeah. But you can't. I don't think you can set it always. I think so. that you used to be able to, but I don't think. So people would have to go and, and click that. But I mean, that could help um, people's interactions if they can see everything without having to click on like each one, which is very annoying. 
um, that might help. So. Can I kind of a quick comment yeah. about that? Um, mm -hmm. What I've seen some people do too is say, saying, like, Krista S. asks, blah, 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 blah. Does anyone have any, you know, I don't know what your page is, but yeah. like, they put that as their status and then when people comment that way. So, yeah, like a repost it. Yeah, they kind of repost it as mm -hmm. their status. That might, I don't know what. Yeah, because like, no matter what, even, even if with the old settings, um, people would have to go to your page to see all those posts from your fans. Um, if it shows up in the new, in like your, if you show, post it as a status update so it shows up in your fans' news feeds, you might even get better engagement. Um, that might even be, I mean, that's kind of tedious for you to have to go and co like copy and paste a bunch of questions, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't even mind that. I think it's just the idea that the only thing, it's almost like the only say that matters is the administrator's say now versus like this this like forum type thing that yeah. used to exist. I mean, I don't know. I think that um, I've seen some commenters really kind of take control <laughs> of pages before, um, depending on what the topic is. I think though, like posting it as your own status and then the comments um, can kind of like go on their own organically. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, then going back and talking about going out and liking other pages on behalf of your fan page. Um, you might like a lot of pages that you don't want everyone to know that you like. So you might like all of your competitors' <laughs> pages to see what they're talking about, uh, so you can you know, know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> what you can do uh, is customize the featured likes. Um, so that is, if you go to edit your page and you select featured, um, which is one of the options, That'll give you the ability to edit the featured likes. And um, you can choose up to five pages that will be shown at one time. If you select a feature more than that, they'll just kind of like rotate on their own. Um, but this is great. Um, you, you can choose less than five. Uh, but you can choose really the page that you want to show people that you're a fan of. So say you support like two charities, two big charities, um, and you those are the only ones you want people to know that you're a fan of. You can set those too as your featured likes, but you can still like like hundreds of other pages um, so that they won't necessarily show up on your fan page. So like whatever you like, this is just right underneath posts from others. Um, it'll show up with all of your likes. So you know I set it so that these show up because these are the only ones that I want people to really know that our page is fan of. Yes. But in that case, will your page show up on theirs that you like? That's totally. Mm, that's totally separate, and actually, I don't think that fan page likes count as likes on your page. Um, so, yeah, it won't show up. What I mean is, if you like a competitor, mm -hmm. your name show up. Yeah, they'll know that you like them. <laughs> and then you read them. No, no. Oh. Yeah, their fans won't know that you like them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's not like bad or sneaky or anything, but um, I think it's good to do. So I think that that is uh, all that I had here. I know that there were some questions people came up with earlier. I'm just going to like one. OK. Um, any questions? Yes. What about landing pages? Yeah, so that's sort of gone uh, on the wayside oh, on Facebook. I couldn't um, figure out how to do it in the first place. <laughs> Well, don't worry, because uh, now I can't really do that. So. Okay. <laughs> um, but you can link directly to anything in your page. So um, if you did create like a custom um, app sort of on your page, just copy and paste the URL at the top there, and that would link people directly to that. Um, what, like, it's not really a tab anymore, but like, you would link them directly like that tab, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, but you, you can't really have like an automatic landing page anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We were talking about Facebook um, charging people now uh -huh. for position. Yeah. In your post. Yeah. So we were talking before the session about promoted posts on Facebook. Um, so this is something that Facebook's doing. Twitter is also, Twitter's started doing it before Facebook, I think. Um, and basically, you may have seen it in your own news feed, is these promoted posts will show up at the top. Uh, just like on Google or anything else where people sell ads now. Um, and uh, I forget your name. Tamar. 
uh, Tamar was asking me if that was a good practice, if she should do that. Um, and, you know, I think it's kind of the same with like any ad. You know, it says promoted posts. People are going to know that you paid for it to be there. And it's just not as authentic as, you know, doing your own posts. Uh, if you're, if you really want to promote something, uh, you could do it. But just for your average weekly post that you're putting up, it's not really necessary. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this yet, but you know, Facebook uh, says that they'll always be free. Do you think that that is true for pages too? Do you think at some point brands will ever have to begin paying for all of their posts? I don't think so. No, I, I think that it will always be free. I mean, don't put me on that 10 years down the line, but um, you know, I think rolling out initiatives like the ads, Facebook makes a lot of money on ads, and then now the promoted posts, they have plenty of revenue streams that. Um, I don't think they're going to charge. Um, plus, you get in trouble. You know, do you charge based on how many fans you have or how big your business is? Like, how do you charge? Or the flat rate? And that's not really fair to the mom and pop shop versus Pepsi. You know, um, so I don't. I don't think they'll do that. Yeah. Yes. But aren't they kind of doing that already by the promoted posts? I mean, not all of your fans are seeing every single post. Only a certain percentage of your fans. Well, I think you're talking about something different. Because, like the promoted posts that we're talking about is like when you pay to have a, a post show up at the top, and it's going to say promoted post there. And that's not that has nothing to do with like this algorithm of. But isn't that like, like so a promoted post could that just be a status update that's promoted as well? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you are paying for people to see your content. If you, you know choose I mean? to do that, but I think only one promoted post shows up at a time. So it's not going to like take up your entire news feed. Right. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say that the promoted the post go to people other than people who like your page. That, yeah, so, that's true too. The so promoted so posts. You have the option. Yeah. When you promote a post, you have the option to only promote to people that have liked your page versus promoting to other people. Yeah, and like you can promote it to a certain geographic demographic, geographic demographic or age range or anything like that. So. The promoted post, it's sort of, um, it's not really a way to update your current fans about what's going on. It's kind of a way to like advertise things or get new fans or things like that. It's not going to be like your regular mode of communication. So how do you, um, I mean, I know you look at the analytical stuff, but how do you get your posts to reach more of your fans? Do you know what I'm saying? Because I'll yeah. show you, oh, you know, this post reached so many people. How do you increase those numbers? Because sometimes I get a lot of it reaches a lot of people, but sometimes it will only reach a small few. And I'm just yeah. Out. Well, are you paying attention to the times of day or days of the week that you post? Not as much as I should. Mm -hmm. Cause that probably has an impact. Um, you know, if you have like one post that you post like five or six o'clock on the dot, everyone might be in their car. Um, you might get really low reach on that post. That um, where is where you can use the scheduling thing and then schedule it to go out. If it has to go out that day, send it at like 8 or 9 o'clock when everyone's off the road again. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. What about all of the posts that you see? Like, I like a lot of pages, you know, I network, mm -hmm. whatever. And a lot of them have been posting the same thing. Oh, please like this comment. I want to see how many people are receiving my posts. So, what is up with all of that? I mean, is there a little trick that you can do to hide those? No. Might not be explained as well. Like, should like should you post a post like that? Like, like this post, and then I know. No, no like, what's I know, right? It's so annoying. But why, it. people, like, why are people doing this? I mean, I don't. Because they're desperate. They're exhausted. Yeah, they they reach out and every time that everyone's yeah. really needs their attention. Yeah. 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 And when people freak out and don't pay attention to what, like, they don't pay attention to when they're posting, they don't pay attention to posting images, they don't pay attention to the important things that you can do as a business owner to increase your engagement rather than just free film yourself. Okay, so so those people, just them. unlike them, and forget yeah, about them. I mean, I wouldn't really recommend doing a post like that. It is really annoying. It is very, yeah. And it doesn't say anything about your page. Like, so what, you ask everyone to like your post, like like this post if you had breakfast this morning. Well, like that doesn't mean anything about your page or your engagement, you know? Right. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that um, 
Sean and I were just talking about this recently, and Sean is really great because he likes a lot of different content, and I try to like a lot of his. Yeah, and we are competitors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <laughs> the example is that if you do have folks that are frequent flyers on your page and they're liking things, um, regardless of how many, you know, it says your reach or how many people saw your you know, post, if other people are liking and engaging in it, it'll actually reach more and it'll you know, get more engagement out of it. I think it's more valuable to even talk to somebody like a, a competitor or a friend or mm -hmm. another vendor and say, hey, I'm going to be posting about this today and it's really important to me. Would you go over there and like it for me? Yeah. That will help you get more. Of yeah. Reach. Um, if it is, there is a connection, there is a way. Yeah, like if Facebook thinks that your post is um, more valuable to people, like if it has more comments and likes, Facebook's going to think that it's a really important post. So, so it's more likely to show up in your news feed of like most popular content. Yeah. Yes. I'm kind of going back to that whole status of, you know, like this post if you eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, a couple months ago, I've been pushed around Facebook because I feel like I haven't grasped all these changes, but I thought I had heard that if you don't like a page at all, if you're not engaging, then you don't see anything in your feed, their feed. So like some of the pages I had liked previously, I just wasn't seeing. And I would go to the Facebook page and be like, oh yeah, I haven't been seeing mm -hmm. your stuff. So I thought that was kind of a way to encourage people to like so that they keep seeing their stuff in their feed. Is that not... If you don't like a page, it won't show up in your news feed. No, like liking, if you're not, I know, I know that, yeah. but like liking posts. Oh. If you're not engaging at all, that's what I had heard. If you're not really engaged, if one, you know, if you're not a person to comment or like on a post, then you're, they're not going to be showing up in your, they're not going to um, I mean, I don't know about that. I think that's another one of those, like, tricky Facebook it's algorithm true. things that right. I just don't really know it's the answer. True. It's well, true. It's true. Because yes. I like a lot of things, and I don't get their status right. updates. Right. But there's a I lot of pages the that I never that interact with. That their social social is up. The reason why that's true, though, is that there's a limited amount of real estate in in the news feed, and you're only on there so much time a day. And all the pages that all the pages that you like, and all of your friends are all posting all day. There's no physical way for you to actually see all of it. So if I have 800 well, friends, if I'm scrolling down, like in Twitter, well, do you put it in most recent or most popular? Most recent. Yeah, if you do most recent, then you should be able to just keep just scrolling, keep scrolling and like you'll see actually, everything. Yeah. This is what is so irritating to me about is that we're even having this discussion. I guess mm -hmm. it's like why I, I it's frustrating. Why is it so complicated? Like, yeah, but well, whatever. Yeah, I don't have the answer. The yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. I'm not like Facebook. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, fan pages used to uh, when people <laughs> wanted to join them show and say, a uh, so-and-so just joined this uh -huh. page. At some point, there was a total change in fan pages. And I was being asked to add a person, mm. which I think makes me sound bad. It's like, oh, I added this one and that one and the other one. And it, and I can't find a way to change that back. Hmm. It's like they said you had to change it. I think you might be on a profile rather than a page, yeah. possibly. Yeah. Sounds like. When you're on a profile, you can like add friends endlessly. When you're on a fan page, you can't actually add anything. Um, you can go out and like other pages on behalf of your page. Well, it used to be a fan page. Mm -hmm. People joined it as fans. Mm -hmm. But then maybe it was two years ago, they made a change. Maybe a group? Maybe it's a group. It might be a group. Yeah. A group. Yeah. Is it a group? Yeah. Oh, well, Facebook allegedly is phasing out groups. But they're still out there, so I mean, I don't know how serious they are about getting rid of them. So, is there something you should be doing? If you have a group, I think that you should delete it and start a fan page. <laughs> so you have to add all the again. Well, yeah, you would have to post a message and say, "Hey, everybody, I'm going to be deleting this community group. I'm being outdated. Um, I'm going to create a fan page from now on." Fan pages are just way better than groups because. Um, like I said, you can have a custom URL, you can have featured likes, you can like other pages. Like groups can't do any of that stuff that I was talking about. Um, it also has better search result ranking and Google and things like that. How do you find out page is considered a fan page or a group? Is there something? Well, does your when you go to your page, it would have a bunch of little pictures of all the people who yeah. are <laughs> and that's a group. Oh my Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and we're running out of time, so like one more question. Okay, it's you. 
Okay, um, I have another trouble too question. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have anyone that has any ideas can kind of, um, I had a Facebook profile that I used as, you know, as a page before I decided to build a new page. And I've had the page for about a year now. I've reached my friend limit on my profile. I can't add any more people. Um, and my page has maybe about 30% as many people as my Facebook profile. Um, and so I'm trying to, I'm really consistent with putting information on both my profile and my page. Um, but I just can't get the engagement on my page as I do my profile. So I'll post in the wow. profile, yeah. get like tons of likes and tons of hits, um, and then post a similar thing. Like I don't, yeah. I'm not redundant, so I don't post the same thing on both. Mm -hmm. But in, like the next day I'll post something that's similar and I'll get maybe a couple of likes, but I just can't get yeah. that process. Well, maybe it's because you are posting like similar kind of content on both of them. So if you post on your profile on Wednesday, and you get tons of comments, and you post on your fan page on Thursday, all those people already commented and already gave their input. Yeah, it's not the same information. It's like a similar, it's like a, I'm a musician, so mm -hmm. I'm always posting about shows. So well, I think people more. have like a bandwidth of how much they can participate with you. So I think that if you're, um, if you want to have like professional presence, um, and like you do run out of friends on your on your profile, you should really try to move them over to your fan page and, and start. I mean, it's it sucks, but maybe like unfriend a bunch of people um, and and tell them to go over to your fan page um, if they're people who you're really not friends with. Like that, like five thousand people, and I can't like lose. I don't, I'm, like I'm just like I'm sorry. I'm, I just, I had someone. I had yeah. an issue. I had a photographer that I'm friends with. Do that. Recently. They, yeah. just, they posted, they said, hey, we've, we've hit our limit. Please, if you want to follow all our information, follow us on our fan page. We're going to have to start going through and friending people. And they had over 200 people say, no problem. I just unfriended you and liked your page. Like, yeah. So I think when you have that huge fan base, if you just explain to them, like, this is how it is. I mean, people I really like you and your exactly. stuff. Exactly. <laughs> the whole thing about they the, personal, like you. the personal aspect of the profile that this one will never be on it. Well, didn't they so create the subscription mm -hmm. thing for that? Like, yeah, people can subscribe yeah. to you they brought that on in Facebook. Yeah, because of yeah. the 5,000 limit. Um, some athletes and things like that these days only, I don't know how you would limit that, but they only put a subscribe button there, so they can't friend request you, but they can subscribe to your news feed. So mm -hmm. it's your personal profile, but with some modifications. Yeah, but like, I think either way, you should probably like choose one and focus on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all folks. Um, thank you very much for listening.